In this video, I'll show you how to build a local RAG system that doesn't connect to the internet using Olama and Python. So there's so many reasons why you want to build a local RAG system over using something that's connected to the internet. So maybe you have very sensitive documents like your medical documents or your financial documents. So security is very important there. You don't want to share those very detailed personal stuff on the internet because you never know which LLM is going to be trained on. So the best way for you to do is be able to get models that you can use offline using Olama in this case. And I'll demonstrate how to do that, how you can feed those personal documents to a local model that's not connected to the internet and still be able to chat with those documents, especially PDFs in this case, and make it very easy without having to upload it to a public uh, online system that will be able to use your information for training. So let's get started. All right, so let's get to it. So this project right here, as you can see on my left side here, I have PDF files, and this could be files on your system uh, that you save, maybe your resume, maybe some lecture notes, some books or whatever that you wanna uh, chat over using the LLM. And in this case, these are documents that the LLM wasn't trained with. So this is data that LLM has never seen potentially, and you wanna be able to chat with that. And uh, the benefit of this, like I mentioned before was, these are private documents that maybe you don't want to share with, uh, you know, using public LLMs that things like chat GPT, because they might, you know, they will have that data. Uh, they have an option to have that data and be able to use it. And you don't want people some, to maybe to see some of your sensitive data. And so all this will be happening locally in your own system. And this is the entire pipeline, as you can see. So we'll start from here. You load your PDFs using unstructured PDF loader. And this is Langchain. And most of the functions we will use here and the modules will be really Langchain modules. So Langchain, if you're not familiar with Langchain, is an AI Python framework that helps you build AI apps by, they abstract a lot of the work that needs to be done in terms of like loading files, using LLMs, and so many other things uh, combined as well, like chunking and things like that. So they make it really easy by abstracting that away. So you just focus on building the app and makes it easier as well. So in this case here, we're loading these files using Langchain uh, unstructured PDF loader. And unstructured is actually a company, unstructured.io, and their product is they will let you load any type of file uh, to be used by an LLM, and that's really cool. So here, Langchain wraps that and use that. We use that once we load the file. It's able to extract all the content from the PDF files. And then what we'll do after that, we'll also use another, another Langchain function here that will go ahead and recursively uh, split all the characters. So basically it will do chunking for us and we'll have a strategy there of how many uh, characters we wanted to chunk and also uh, overlaps as well. And then once the chunks have been uh, chunked, we'll put them in a variable and then we'll iterate through them and then we'll get the, we'll use nomic embed text. And this is a embedding model. And there's so many other embedding models that you can use, but for this case, I chose nomic because it's just, it's just fast and it's one of the popular ones. And just as well as a note, everything in this pipeline right here can be replaced. So you can switch this with any other ones that you prefer. So this is not like a, you know, this is the best kind of thing, but no, this is just to get you started and know which ones you can see, you can swap. So you can swap a bunch of this stuff. Uh, there's so many options. And then after we've embedded, uh, we've created vector embeddings of those chunks, we then load them to Chroma DB. And as well, again, you can use Chroma, you can use VVA, you can use Melvus. There's so many other them out there, but I'm using Chroma in this case. Now, once you load them to Chroma, the next step would be to query it and retrieve whatever you want to ask of, of, of that data, right? So the user, as a user, you will put in a query, you'll say, hey, maybe, you know, what is this document about? Or what what's, you know, summarize this for me. So what happens here in this case, I'm also using a multi-query retriever module from Langchain. And basically what that does is optimize your question more. So basically you might ask, you know, summarize this for me. And this multi-query retriever, what it does, I told it, hey, generate five more questions based off this user question. And it will go ahead and generate questions that might be varied differently, worded differently, stated differently. And that way, when it sends those five questions to the, uh, to the, to, to the vector database to be able to retrieve the closing, close enough context that matches those questions, it, re it returns also like other, another five answers for that as well, right? So that way, at, once those questions come back, we get a union of all the questions and get a, a short summary of like probably the best answers of all the five. And that's what gets sent to the LLM for it to generate an answer for you. And that's just a strategy to make your answers better. 
in this case for rag and there's so many strategies for this uh piece for rag actually there's so many strategies there's things like agents which is something that is recently gaining popularity but i'm using this multi query retriever here to make it a little better and see if, if it does better than just kind of regular just retrieving it without doing this and so once those questions have been generated then it gets passed to the llm with the prompt which your question and then the context will be those summaries and then the Gemma here is a model that I'm using locally, but in this case, um, I swapped it with Llama 2. And you can swap it with whatever local model that you have here from Olama. And then once it's done that, it gives you back the response uh, to you right here as a person on the other end. So let's see how the code looks like, right? So let's jump over to the code. And so what I've done here already, I have three different sections here that we'll go through. So the first one is ingesting the PDF, uh, the code for ingesting the PDF. And then I have the code for creating vector embeddings of that PDF and then retrieving, which is asking questions over it and getting answers back uh, to you as well. So let's start with ingesting PDFs. So what do we want to do here first? We want to install unstructured and long chain and also install unstructured all docs. And this all docs basically covers everything to include PDF and text as well. And then, the next thing here we want to import, we want to import unstructured PDF. So here we installed it, but now we want to import it so we can use it within our code here. And then we also import online PDF loader. And what this online PDF loader does, it gives you an option. Maybe, you know, if you don't want to, if you don't have these files locally, you can access it by downloading it from, from the internet where there's already a PDF hosted there. One thing to remember though, if you don't have access to that at PDF online, like maybe you might click it on your website and you could order on a website and you can see it. But when it comes to downloading it, it doesn't let you do that. It will throw like a 403 error, which basically means you're not allowed to access it. So keep that in mind. So it might just be best to just download and then use it. And uh, there's also lots of different loaders within Langchain that you can use that might do that better than uh, this one. So I downloaded this file from online i think it's from world Ed world economic forum and it was a recent one from january and i figured hey these llms were trained a while back and so they won't have this information so what's the best way to demonstrate how you can add context to llms by using rag so this is the best way to do it give them something that they, they haven't seen they haven't been trained on so this is the file that we'll be going through and i think it's about how many pages it's about 26 pages um so not too big right um just a good for beginning uh, understanding uh, RAG, how it works and implementing it. So cool. So the next step here, what we will do next is load this file. So it's pretty easy. So if local path, and basically I'm just saying if this local path is, you know, has something, you know, or the path to it, I want it to load and I'm using a structured uh, loader and it's loading that I'm passing that as a loader and then it's loading that. And then once that's loaded, let's just verify here. This is just verifying the first page and we're just previewing, hey, uh, how what does the dat data look like? So we can see this is already loaded. So it definitely just took went ahead and we can verify that as well. So it says in collaboration, McKinsey and company, the global corporate barometer 2024. So let's see, and that should be page one. Let's see if that's exactly what's on there. All right, so yeah, you can see in collaboration with McKinsey, uh, the global corporation barometer 2024 okay so we it has the content that we're looking for so cool all right so we're done with ingesting and we verified that hey we did ingest we can see some data which is cool all right so now let's go to the next step which is vector embeddings so we want to embed this text and basically we're converting it from human readable to computer readable it'd be like zeros and ones and uh, more like vectors right so these are something here i want to note so for Vector embeddings, you need to also pack, you use a vector embedding model. And in this case, I chose to use Nomic Embed. And if you have Olama, if you don't have Olama on your system, the quickest way to do it is just go to olama.ai. And then from there, and we can go here right now, I can show you how it looks like. So you can go to olama.ai and you can install this. You just download it here. You click download and you download in your system and install it. And if you also have Windows and Linux, I think it's on preview right now and uh, it's it's really easy to, to install. They have like some other instructions on how to do that right now. And uh, once you've installed it, the next thing would be for you to uh, pull models or install models within your system, right? So there's a list here. So if you come up here to models, uh, which is olama.com slash library, 
uh, you will see all the files, all the all the models that are available for you to use locally. So you have Gemma, Llama 2, Mistral, Mixtral, Command R, um, you have Lava, so many of them right here, right? So so many of them here to play with. So we're going to be using Gnomic Embed Text. And as you can see here, it's a high performing open embedding model with a large token context window. Yes. So that's the key part. It has a, a large context window that we can use and that's the key part right there so you can take in a lot of uh, tokens that we can then load it to a vector database so here i've already installed this so i don't need to install but this is how you would do it on a vector on a not a vector database on a collab notebook and then once that's done you do olama olama list and that way it will show us all the models that are within your uh, local system so if you have if you just install nomic up here if you do all my list, it will show you if, if it's there already. And you can see here, it's already in my system. And I have some other ones as well that we'll use down the road. And after that, the next thing would be for you to install Chroma DB, which is a vector database that will store all the vector embeddings here. Um, and then the next thing you want to install is Langchain Text Splitters. And this is what we use to chunk our text. All right. So the next thing here we do is import all my embeddings and then also import recursive character splitter and then chroma so the first step here we're doing split and chunking so we'll split the text and uh, the chunk size that we'll split here which is chunking really here we'll do 7500 uh chunk so basically every character seven after 7500 characters we'll cut there and then that'll be the first one and then we'll do another 7500 cut it that's the next one but there's always a problem right so if it does cut at 75 it might cut in the middle of the word or in between words that are actually making sense and then by the time it starts the other one it might not connect very well when it comes time to retrieval you might not get the accurate answers that you're looking for so it might hallucinate or just not really get to understand the full context so we're introducing here a chunk overlap basically to kind of take some text before like in between each one of them will kind of have like a middle portion where we pass in between each so that they remember oh this was the other context from the other line and this was from the other one so that way it's there's an end and there's a coherence. So that way it's, we're just not kind of lost in the middle here, uh, avoiding the problem of lost in the middle a little bit. So it's not hundred percent foolproof. You can play with these numbers. Uh, these numbers are arbitrary. You can just adjust to find uh, the best that kind of work for you as well. And another thing as well, you can uh, fine tune your embedding model and thus advance at this point based on your data to make it better. Uh, so there's so many strategies here to, to use, but this is just a basic, basic one to show you how this is done so you can get going uh, and, and working with this. So the next thing would be to, once you've done that, it would be split the documents. And here I'm just passing the data that I wanted to split. And we're passing in the data that we already loaded at the top, which is our PDF. And it's gonna do the splitting into chunks. And then the next thing is to add that, all those chunks into vector database. But first thing what it does, it takes every chunk and then it converts those to vectors and then it loads them to the vector database. And so basically here, what we're doing, it was saying from documents, Chroma, hey, hey Chroma from my documents, please take in the chunks, that will be the document. And then embedding, we'll do Olama embeddings and we'll pass in the model that we want to use as our embedding model, which is Nomic embed text, which we did download a while back ago. And then we also wanted to show the progress. So while it's loading the files, we wanted to show the progress when it's working through it. Um, so that way we're just not seeing like empty screen for a long time not knowing what's happening and then we also want it to be in a collection called local rag and local rag you can think of this collection name as more of like a database so you know uh, in your database you have like tables and that could be one of them you know you're putting a table specific table all right cool now we're done with vector embedding so just to preview a little bit what we've done we've loaded our text up here we've then gone ahead and created vector embeddings of that data that we just loaded from the PDFs. And then we load it into uh, Chroma DB for vector database. So the next step would be to retrieve, you know, you ask it a question now and then you get responses back. So there's a structure here of how we do this with Langchain. And Langchain has chat prompt template and then prompt template. We'll use those here in a second. We have string out parts as well. And then we have chat or llama, which will be the local model that we want to use. And then we have runnable pass through, which will be our question. And then we have multi-layer multi-query retriever, which is what I talked about, generating five questions. And that's what we'll get here in, into uh, here in a second. So first let's instantiate what model we want to use. So 
here the local model that I'm going to use in this case to as on my LLM will be Mistral. You can change this as well. You can put it to Llama 2 or whatever ones that you will download. Maybe your system has a better enough memory or you have a, a bigger system in GPU or something that can run some really good models here real fast. So we'll pass that to chat or Llama and we'll instantiate that as our model that we'll use here. So I'm going to be using Mistral. I found Mistral to be really good. So uh, feel free to experiment with others as well. And then We'll create a variable here, query prompt, and we'll use a prompt template here. And basically this is what I was talking about. You know, you the input variable will be a question. So it will take in your question and it will generate five similar questions based off your question. And uh, from that, those are the questions that will be refined and will, will be used to ask to pass those as queries to the vector database for the vector database to retrieve answers with those five questions. And at the end of that, we will get a union of all the answers you got from those five questions and that will be the best probably answer to our question, uh, essentially. So that's what it does here. We're just kind of passing in the question and then it's going to generate that. We're just giving you the instruction here on how to do that. Um, and then after that, we're doing the retriever. So we're creating our retriever here and we're doing multi-query retriever from LLM and we're passing it in with, we're going to the vector database, which we already created up here and, uh, and already passing the text into that vector database from our PDFs. And so we're saying, hey, vector database, we're going to use it as a retriever and the LLM that we will use here will be Mistral and then the prompt query. This is the prompt query that we'll use. Hey, we want you to generate five questions uh, that will be used. All right, cool. And then the next step would be to create a rank rag prompt. And the rag prompt here in this case is just saying, hey, answer the question based only on the following context. The context will be what we get from the vector database. And then the question will be our question that we asked in the beginning, right? The query. And uh, after that, we'll, that will be our prompt. So as our prompt to the LLM will be, hey, um, will be from template, we'll just start pass out as our template as well. So here we'll create a chain. So a long chain has this chains uh, that you can use that makes it easy to chain things together. So we have the context will be our retriever, which we've set it up here already, which is multi-query retriever that will get all those five questions and give us the context back. And then our question, we'll pass our question to the runnable pass through. And then after that, we'll pass in the prompt. And our prompt up here will be what we already made here, which is, hey, answer questions based only on the following context, right? And then we'll pass it to the LLM, which will be Mistral in our case, and then it will output the answers to us right here. So that's the chain over there. So we'll run that and then we'll get here and we'll just do chain invoke. And this is where we ask the question. So I was a little bit extra. I wanted to use input. And in Python, if you do input brackets, something in there, it basically gives you the option to, you know, op opens up an input box, which you start blinking, and then you can type in a question in real time and then send it. Um, you don't have to do that. You can just check out this input and use brackets. And I've shown down here how to do that as well. And so a quick note here, the reason why I'm, I already dug this, this already has been ran before. I actually recorded this video in the first go through and it actually competed with the system in terms of resources and it broke the video, the video disappeared. So wasn't able to save it, which sucks a lot, a lot there, but uh, it, it consumes a lot of uh, resources trying to run this. And if you have a GPU, the better for you, but I don't have that. So I had to run this first and then come record now. So, but essentially here, what I asked was, what is this about? Basically, what is this document about that I just have it in my vector database and it says, hey, this document is the insights report of the Global Corporation Barometer 2024 by the World Economic Forum in collaboration with McKinsey and Company. It provides an analysis of the state of global cooperation across five pillars, trade, capital, innovation, technology, climate, natural capital, health and wellness, and peace and security. The report examines trends in cooperative action uh, and the outcomes to determine overall level of global cooperation in each area. It also includes recommendations for leaders on how to reimagine global cooperation in a new era. So that sounds pretty right, you know, and it sounds like a summary as well. So this is another way of, I guess, me asking for a summary. And I think it, from what we discussed a little bit earlier, it took, what is this about? And probably generated five different questions based off a variation of those and asked the same question. And that's why it sounds like a summary because you know, I would think one of them was like, hey, generate a summary of this. And that's why we got this really nice summary. The next question I asked it was, what are the five pillars of global cooperation? And first of all, let's just go to those five global cooperation questions here. Uh, the answers that I expect. So the global cooperation barometer, five pillars of global 
Corporation. So the first one is trade and capital, and then we have innovation and technology, and then we have climate and natural capital, health and wellness, and then peace and security. So let's go and see if it got that right, right? So the five pillars of global security, so global cooperation are one, trade and capital, innovation and technology, climate and, natural, uh, climate and natural capital, health and wellness, and peace and security. Yeah, I think it did pretty good. It got it all right. All right. So this is just a simple example to show you, right? Like how you can do this really easily. And the most important thing is most of this stuff is swappable. So you can even use Llama Index. You can just not do it with uh, Longchain and you can do it with Llama Index. Or you can do it just raw. Don't use any of them and just do it by yourself, right? Although you you know, you have to manage a lot of things. You have to build a lot of uh, functions to do some specific things for you, like extracting PDFs, and they might not even be consistent. So there's so many things in there to consider. And also there is the agentic things that are happening now that, you know, you have agents in between maybe before you embed it and also you have them in, you know, within embedding, you might even assign an agent to each document. Um, so that way you have one agent for each document that you can query. So there's a lot of, I guess, techniques and strategies being used right now for RAG that are coming up or being improved. And so this is just a basic example to get started. I might get into some of those, especially the agents ones, because I'm really interested in agents. Uh, very uh, recently, I'm really interested in agents. So that might be something I might do in future and make a video of, right? So let me know if you like it, by the way. But uh, for this one specifically, I just wanted to show you how you can get this done real quickly. And none of this is connected to the internet. You can do this offline, literally. You can just, you know, so long as you've imported everything that you need to import up here, you can just log off you know, turn off your Wi-Fi and you can run this basically on your system. So the next step that I will do after this, and I'm working on it is converting these to a Streamlit app where it's very easy, user friendly, because for somebody that doesn't code, this is probably very scary a little bit because like, what's all this code? Like, I don't understand. So I will convert this to a Streamlit app where you can just basically, you have an upload button, you upload a PDF file and it does these embeddings in the back. It, and then it has a section where you, put in your question and then you just chat with that PDF basically. And uh, this should be able, you should be able to spin that at least locally on your system. This is not gonna be on the internet as well, but it takes all this code that seems like, you know, very scary. And uh, it gives you an interface where you can interface with it. I also wanna note that uh, Llama, uh, all Llama has a web UI as well that you can use. But the reason why I try to use Instrument is because it helps you, you know, you can, you can just, customize it the way you want it to. Maybe you don't like the way the web UI is built with Olama. You want to build your own thing or, you know, it's fun anyways, right? To learn and build something new. But that's all I wanted to share for this today. Please let me know if this is something that you enjoyed. And also let me know as well what you would like for me to see, uh, what do you like to see me cover in the next videos? And with that, happy coding and see you in the next video. Bye.